Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be doing the World Cup of train companies in the UK. How this will work is very, very simple. We will have a bracket where 16 train companies will fight to the death and battle in an attempt to win best train company in the UK. Who will be the referee to this battle? Yours truly, of course. But before we get into the video, please like and subscribe as this took a very long time to make. And without any further delay, let's begin. So then, this is the bracket we'll be dealing with. Let's add in some train companies. Ooh, okay, okay. I see a, I see a couple of good matchups. I see one or two that are going to be pretty difficult. Let's not, let's not delay this much longer. Let's move on and start over here with Avanti West Coast versus C2C. So here are the route maps for both companies, which I'm going to be showing for each matchup. C2C primarily serves London and Essex from Fenchurch Street to South End. I only have one experience of C2C, and that was going from Stratford to Liverpool Street. It was just your average train, nothing too special. Avanti West Coast, on the other hand, provides long distance intercity services, which connects major cities like London, Birmingham, Manchester, Glasgow and Edinburgh. Avanti also offers a higher quality journey with a more spacious experience, whereas C2C aims for punctuality and reliable service. Of course, Avanti has had its fair share of problems but I don't think that's enough for it to lose to C2C. The second matchup is Cross Country versus EMR. Like Avanti, Cross Country operates on a massive scale with services stretching all the way from Aberdeen down to Penzance, running through the North, Midlands, Southwest and Scotland. Like the name suggests, East Midlands Railway operates primarily in the East Midlands with some services going down to London St Pancras, which means that you can take a trip from Sheffield to Paris and only have to change once. I have personally used EMR and Cross Country before and I did quite like them both. Simply because of the scale of the services that Cross Country provides, I'm going to have to give this one to Cross Country. This one is pretty easy for me to be honest. The London Underground is by far my favourite transportation method. It efficiently moves over 1 billion people per year throughout the city and it feels like stepping into different periods of time when you change from one line to another. While the Overground is very nice, it can be quite slow at times and it does seem to act as a complementary service to the Underground as opposed to the backbone of the transport in London. So the winner for this round is going to have to be the Underground. Next up is Thameslink versus Chiltern Railways. Again, another easy one for me personally. Chiltern Railways operates between London, the Midlands and Oxfordshire. They do provide spacious trains, but not quite as spacious as Thameslink, who run modern air-conditioned trains at a high frequency between Bedford, Brighton, Kent, Cambridge and Peterborough. Thameslink is the only train provider that goes right through London and therefore provides a unique service travelling through the city, stopping at major stations like St Pancras, Blackfriars and London Bridge to name a few. There is no doubt in my mind for this one, Thameslink can take the crown. Okay, so now we have the left side all done, let's move over to the right and we'll be starting with Lumo versus LNER. This one here is a little bit tricky. I've always quite liked the design of Lumo trains and then being electric and not stopping at too many stations makes it an extremely fast way to go from London to Edinburgh. Lumo takes a much more modern approach whereas LNER focus more on giving the customer a premium experience with dining options and a first class alternative. However, what you can't fail to notice when looking at the maps here is the sheer difference in routes between the two. Lumo serves five stations and LNER serve close to 60. It's because of this I have to give the victory to LNER. Next one, Grand Central versus GWR. Now to me, Grand Central have always felt a little bit out of place in the train world. Black trains look a bit weird and their logo would look better on a car. I don't have any personal experience with Grand Central, but from what I've seen, they offer quite a spacious experience with fast services from London up to Bradford and Sunderland. However, the scale of GWR is simply on a level above. GWR dominate the Southwest with services from London to Cardiff, Swansea, Penzance, Gatwick Airport and Portsmouth to name a few. Another thing to point out is that GWR actually have normal looking trains. I do actually have experience with GWR and I was delayed by about two hours while visiting Bath earlier this year. However, I know this isn't a common occurrence and with all this in mind, I think GWR claims the win for this round. Now, Southwestern versus ScotRail is an interesting one for me because I have used both of them before. ScotRail is the main rail operator in Scotland, yeah, big surprise, and it serves stations like Glasgow, Edinburgh, Inverness and Aberdeen. Southwestern offers services from London to Portsmouth, Weymouth, Exeter St David's and plenty more. However, based on personal experience alone, I think Southwestern takes it here, despite the companies being a pretty even matchup overall. Now, Southeastern versus Eurostar is an interesting one. Actually, no, it isn't. This is UK train companies and Eurostar is cheating by running outside of the UK. Therefore, it's disqualified and our Southeastern wins this round. Better luck next time, Eurostar. Look at that bracket now. It's starting to look beautiful. Let's head in to round two. Again, starting on the left with Avanti West Coast versus Cross Country. Cross Country definitely has a bigger network and that is very clear when looking at both of the maps. However, the closest it gets to London is Reading in the West and Stansted Airport in the East. I do think that one of the requirements for a nationwide network should be to make a stop or have at least a terminus in the capital. And because of that alone, I'm going to have to give Avanti the win here. It was a tough match up 
and that's the only deciding factor I can really think of. This one here on the other hand is not such a difficult decision. When it comes to the Underground versus Thameslink, I do really like them both and I do believe that the Underground is what keeps London running as a city, however I do have to accept that there are some cons when comparing it to Thameslink. The first being that the Underground is quite loud in some areas, especially on the Jubilee line, and it can also get very warm which is not the most ideal. The most obvious thing it loses on compared to Thameslink is that it only serves one city, whereas Thameslink provides a spacious, air-conditioned experience with very smooth ride, enjoyable journeys and covering quite a long distance, so I think it's a no-brainer that I give the win to Thameslink for this round. And now let's move on to the right with LNER versus GWR. GWR has a very, very extensive network in the southwest. LNER has an extensive network across the whole of Britain going as far south as London and as far north as Inverness. Let's just keep it simple, LNER wins this one. The next matchup is Southwestern Railway versus Southeastern. Now, obviously, Southwest, Southeast, pretty decent matchup. Southeastern does offer high speed services, but as I made it clear in my previous video, with the size of the UK and especially the distance between London and Dover, it's just not a big enough distance to make any noticeable difference to travel times. So, for that reason, the fact that Southeastern has high speed trains on offer is not going to factor into my decision. I have used Southwestern quite a few times myself now, and the journeys I take normally have me spending upwards of two hours on their trains, and it is honestly a very, very enjoyable experience. The trains are spacious, the routes are nice and their punctuality has never ever let me down. Even when there was the landslip at Hook, they worked round the clock and got it fixed faster than anyone could have expected. And so for that reason, Southwestern takes it for me. It's nearly done now. Round three and the final four contenders again starting on the left with Avanti West Coast versus Thameslink. Despite Thameslink being the only operator to run right through London, that still doesn't make up for the route being very limited compared to Avanti. Goodbye Thameslink, you had a good run. Same goes for LNER versus Southwestern Railway. We've heard plenty from both sides, so I'm not going to bore you with more details. As good as Southwestern is, I can't take this victory away from LNER. Southwestern and GWR are basically interchangeable and I think LNER still stands its ground and takes the win here quite easily. Could not have ended up more of a boring result because it's just come down to east versus west coast main lines which is going to be pretty tough because I, I do quite like them both. When it comes to Avanti versus LNER as far as actual operators go I'd say they're basically the same. They both offer a high quality experience whether you're in first class or not. Avanti stops as north as Glasgow and Edinburgh whereas LNER continues all the way up to Aberdeen and Inverness. When you take the actual routes themselves into consideration the east coast main line is a much more picturesque route with fantastic views and even more amazing scenery. And finally the nail in the coffin, Avanti's reputation has been permanently tarnished by the issues they were facing last year and because of that the winner of the UK World Cup doesn't make any sense I know is LNER congratulations I know this World Cup victory means the world to you thank you very much for watching ladies and gentlemen if you want to complete the bracket yourself take a screenshot now fill it in and let me know your thoughts in the comments this video did take quite a lot of time and research to make so I'd massively appreciate it if you liked and subscribed and I'll see you in the next one bye bye